I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to look at impressions. Ah! Come quick! I'm ready, Gunter! Hey, Rocco! Hey, everybody, I'm Tom Kenny, animation voice actor known as SpongeBob SquarePants, the Ice King from Adventure Time, the Mayor from the Powerpuff Girls, and Heifer from Rocco's Modern Life. People seem to love to do impressions of animated characters online, so we're gonna rate a couple of them and check them out. I'm ready! Hey! I'm ready! Hi, I'm SpongeBob! Gary! You are gonna finish your dessert, and you are gonna like it! Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not easy. It's not as easy as it looks. Uh, man, that guy was great. He brought the intensity. He had the technique. The hand technique. <laughs> Can you see the big scar that I have there after 20 years of doing that? Uh, no, that's actually not from doing SpongeBob. That guy's bringing it. He's awesome. A character like SpongeBob is really hyperactive, but he also has really quiet moments where he doubts himself. I feel like a failure, Gary. And you also have those moments like like this person was doing where he's, where he's really yelling his head off! And you gotta get all that, and it all has to sound like SpongeBob. SpongeBob has really high highs and really low lows, emotionally. When he's happy, he's really happy. <laughs> jumping up in the air, freaking out. And when he's sad, he's so despairing that you've seen it on the show where he actually cries like a lawn sprinkler where his eyes start to go I don't need a therapist because I've got SpongeBob. Good morning, Gary. <gasps> Hooray! Good morning, Gary. Bye. Guess what today is? Wow. That's right. A day for jellyfishing. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. First of all, I would like to say to his parents, don't worry too much. It's probably just a phase. <laughs> That's what my parents thought, so maybe it's not. I like that he brings the color. He wears the yellow. He seems to really be intimate with the ins and outs of SpongeBob. Although, if he was a real SpongeBob fan, he would have SpongeBob on his guns and not Deadpool. I do Gary the Snail, too, who is basically a cat in snail form. Uh, Gary's a snail of few words. He's a snail of one word. Meow. 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 But Gary, there's weird gradations to him, too. Like, sometimes he freaks out. When he's, when he's flipping out, sometimes he's bored. And this guy nails, uh, nails Gary, too. When you're doing voiceover for TV, the union contract is that they get you for three voices. Once you go to a fourth voice, they got to give you a little bump in pay. So they have you for one to three voices. So it pays to be versatile because they would rather pay one guy to do three voices than three guys separately to do three voices. So a lot of times you wind up talking to yourself and having conversations uh, with yourself. Brian Wilson once said to me, wait a minute. So basically, you're a paid schizophrenic. And I said, yeah, that, yeah, that's right. So yeah, this guy manages to get the timing. He goes back and forth between SpongeBob and Gary without a hitch and manages to firmly grasp his jellyfishing net at the same time. Good object work. Hey, Patrick, what am I now? I understand everything now. I must be the opposite of SpongeBob by being Squidward. Boy, oh boy, do I like playing the clarinet. I practice and practice all day long, but I never get any better. This young man has taken it to a whole nother level. He's kicking it up a notch where something that happens on SpongeBob a lot is that the characters do impressions of the other characters on the show. So he's doing SpongeBob doing an impression of Squidward which, uh, you know, is very meta. It comes a little easier to us because we've been standing next to each other in the recording booth for 20 years now. He really nailed that. That's great, because a lot of times you gotta do the math, because you're going, SpongeBob is starting out here, and Squidward is starting here. <laughs> oh, please. But I wanna sound like SpongeBob doing Squidward, so you still have to put some SpongeBob in there because he's not that great of an impressionist. SpongeBob isn't. That's where the Rubik's Cube uh, aspect of this comes in, where you go, wow, I'm thinking about this stuff way too much. You're looking kind of fat, Gunter. Gunter! You're getting fat, Gunter. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, watch this. Oh, yeah. Whee! Yeah! Whee! Whew. The 
feel the butter. <laughs> wow. This guy is obviously a Cartoon Network guy. He invested in the beard, probably a repurposed Santa Claus beard, so that tells me he's resourceful, which you have to be to be a voice actor. One thing that he gets at there is that the Ice King lives alone in this ice palace. The Ice King is about loneliness. He's a really lonely person. It's just him and his penguins who kind of only live with him because he feeds them. Again, much like cats <laughs> or snails. This guy gets that back and forth, that, that uh, mental uh, ping-ponging that tends to happen when guys are in solitary confinement for a really long time. So that was either an awesome Ice King impression or a cry for help. You be the judge. They call me the Ice King. What? Who dares into the Ice Kingdom? Do you know why I'm here? Do you know what Ice King means? Oh, you're trying to hit me. <laughs> he went the interesting route of doing a Catherine Hepburn Ice King fusion. So uh, his voice is a little more high and keening than the actual Ice King, but it's a valid choice. I would say maybe that's what the Ice King sounded like in his 20s before he got so bitter, but uh, still a valid uh, take on the character. Hey, how about the personals? Hey, Rockle. Ooh, I love chicken. Man, you really caved on that pogo stick. I definitely thought you were gonna keep it. Wow. Rocco's Modern Life and Heifer was the first regular animated series I was ever on, so that's a really important one for me. It's where I first met Steven Hillenberg, who would go on to create SpongeBob. Steve was a creative director on Rocco's Modern Life. When I went into audition for Heifer, I did my uh, basically an impression of my nephew who at the time was like 13, 14 years old, but he always acted like he was on the verge of laughing, <laughs> like he was always holding in a laugh. What this guy nails is that, that kind of going up at the end of the sentences, hey Rocco, it's always kind of going up at the end, he never goes down at the end, he always goes up at the end. It's a little bit of like valley speak valley girl, where everything ends on an up. Come on, give it a shot. Hi, I'm Heifer. Ooh. That was a hoot. I dreamt that eels were biting my butt. I'm realizing Heifer is a harder impression to do for people than SpongeBob. I tend to play a lot of characters without any filter, and they're often yellow. I'm realizing Dog from Cat Dog was one of them. SpongeBob is definitely one of them. And Heifer is, is for sure one of them. The thing about Heifer that this guy taps into is that there's no filter and there's always a lot of joy in him. Like, everything's wonderful. I dreamt that eels were biting my butt. Everything's awesome. And there's never any uh, negatives with, with Heifer. And SpongeBob's kind of like that too. That's kind of impacted me as a person. Like, playing characters that are kind of unrelentingly positive can't help but give you a more positive outlook on life, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, thanks, imaginary drawing characters. Hi, everyone, remember me? <laughs> you could take over my town, or my city, but nobody, and I mean nobody, touches my Marin hat. Now give it back. <laughs> <laughs> I love, he's got the heifer nervousness in between, I love it. First of all, I felt like this guy's t-shirt was trying to hypnotize me, and it was actually working. It's like really, really big man from Rocco's Modern Life. Stare into my nipples of the future! And, uh, and I actually was, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. The mayor sort of has that mushed mouth thing happening where there's, there's sort of like there's stuff in his cheeks or there's things in his lips, and he's always sort of... Interestingly, this guy is doing the mayor from the Powerpuff Girls, but his kind of nervous laughter in between his lines is 100% heifer. He probably doesn't even realize that he's channeling those two things at once. I felt like what this guy captured with the mayor was sort of that uh, you, you don't quite uh, know what the next thing you're going to say is. It's sort of uh, coming to you. Uh, 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 Mojo Jojo is uh, destroying Townsville. Yeah. You know, you can always tag the line with a little bit. Yeah. That's all, that always works. <laughs> a lot of times, voices are amalgams of half-baked impressions that 
aren't really that successful. So the mayor on Powerpuff Girls started out as a mashup of, you know, the wizard from the 1939 Judy Garland movie, Wizard of Oz. Uh, back where I come from, we have people called good deed doers, uh, sort of like that, but also a little mix of the old lady in Every Which Way But Loose, which was a Clint Eastwood movie involving an orangutan. And uh, Ruth Gordon, uh, was an actress that was in that movie, and I remember she said, Give me back those ZD Oreos! And uh, I just remember that line from when I was a kid, Give me back those GD Oreos, yelled by this old lady, and mashing them up kind of turned into the mayor from the Powerpuff Girls. Mojo may be a supervillain. Powerpuff Girls, come quick! Mojo Jojo has written Miss Bellum out of the show! <laughs> this young actor is very enthusiastic. What he gets is, uh, you'll see that his mouth is going all over the place when he's doing uh, the mayor. It's that, again, that, that mush mouth full of marbles thing. <laughs> the mayor's often in a high state of distress. A lot of animation voiceover is really extreme. So anything that it takes to get that sound, anything anything that your mouth will do, or your face can do, or your eyes can do, or your arms can do, anything to get you to that place is all grist for the mill. And this guy's got a lot of grist. It's so mind-blowing and flattering to see people doing impressions of these characters and that they're still part of people's consciousness and their lives, but there's something about animated characters, the stuff that hits you when you're in your formative stages, that's the stuff that stays with you for the rest of your life. And uh, man, I've got a great gig. <laughs>